Hello, this is Strategy Miscellany, and this is episode four of our campaign as the Servants in Terra Invicta. It is July 2024. We're about a year and three quarters in from where we started. And I think it's time to kind of take stock a little bit and make a more coherent plan for where we're going from here. So I sort of have several areas we're going to be working on. So number one, I would call domestic politics, basically shoring up our control in our centers of control. Our centers of control now are basically India and a couple of its neighbors. Uh, three of its neighbors, actually. Here's the Himalayas. Then we have Singapore. And then we have the Korean Peninsula. And so what do we need to do to make these places work better for us? So in India, we eventually have to root out Project Exodus from these two control points. Basically, I'm waiting for them to stop defending interests on them to decide they have to do something else. And then I should be able to go after them. Because they don't really have any public opinion on their side, or very little. So then, looking at India's priorities, what I'm trying to do is sort of rush their knowledge priority first. And I think from doing some watching of other people's playthroughs and looking at things, that it works a little better if you really do try and focus pretty heavily on one thing at a time with a country. So I'm going to take some of the points off these other things here and sort of try and synergize with what Project Exodus is doing. The good thing is they're not running spoils, so they're not making the country worse. And they are focusing on boost, which is kind of what I want to do anyway. So I'm cutting back on everything except boost and unity in order to put those points into knowledge. Plenty of points are also going to go into improving the military, because Project Exodus is doing that for me. We also need to stabilize them a little bit with some counselor missions. Now, looking to the neighbors, um, this country needs a lot of help. The Himalayas here. I'm going to take the points off um, funding and try and focus on growing their economy first with a little bit of unity. Bangladesh is in a better place. Um, it doesn't really need this unity spending. It's actually fairly ideologically unified. So I'm going to keep it about like this. And I'm going to focus on one thing. I'm going to focus on economic growth for them. And then the Koreas, I'm going to be able to unify the Koreas in about three months. So after that, it'll be easier to work on this. But for now, we're slowly trying to fix North Korea. South Korea is in a better place, so we're able to spread its money around a little bit more. I'm going to hold off on building a navy here until we have some other things we can do. Um, and I'm going to reduce the amount that's going towards our funding. Then we have Singapore here. Singapore, I have heavily giving me funding, is the idea, basically. And also trying to grow its welfare and knowledge. Its economy is about as rich as it's ever going to get. And unity, we don't really need points in, so I'm going to take that off. We need to run some public campaigns here to get more popular. I'm going to take off spoils now that I've decided I am going to run Singapore for the long run. So then we have our points in the Gulf States. And we're kind of trying to balance a lot of things out here. Project Act, or the Academy is trying to run a space flight program. I should take that control point from them once I have a little more room in the budget. So that's essentially domestic politics. The next thing to think about is places to expand. There's a few different options here. We could try and crack into Japan. We're going to take it away from the initiative. We could try and spread into Southeast Asia, a lot of which is already abandoned or under crackdown. So that might be the best option. Another option I was thinking about was Scandinavia, which it looks like is also fairly abandoned. I could pull Sweden and Norway, 
or sorry, Sweden and Finland, Norway's already out, and maybe even Denmark out of the EU, and eventually form a little Scandinavian bloc that would be a thorn in the side of whoever's running the EU bloc. But the problem is, before I can do any of those, I need to get more control points, which is why we're running this management research here. That will help us do that, as well as upgrading our counselors will also help. But aside from that, uh, expansion, which will be a little bit in the future, we have to think about our space future. So we're going to build a moon base eventually. But another thing I want to do is scout some of these near-Earth asteroids. So here's a... Well, that's interesting. It's more of an elliptical orbit. And looking at its materials, I don't think it's the most useful. There's another one I was looking at that's more near Earth. Here we go. It's called Lick. It's a Mars-crossing asteroid. Looks like it has a lot of everything, possibly. So I want to send a probe there in about a year. We'll know what's up there, and we can possibly build a base there. Because, you know, it's fairly near the Earth, and I think it would just be useful to have some bases on near-Earth asteroids that we could eventually maybe build a fleet on and send to strike at our opponents at the opportune moment. To do that, we're going to need more boost, which once we've got India and the Korean Peninsula in slightly better situations, we can really put the hammer down and focus on boost. And then the other thing we need to focus about, though, is back on Earth. We need to start doing more um, intelligence into what the other factions are doing with some of our people. And also, we have a Humanity First Counselor here, who I'm going to try and arrest. We'll bring them in. It's Ready? unlikely to work, but if it works, we can get a lot more information about Humanity First. Maybe even turn a Counselor to our side, and that would be very helpful. Meanwhile, I want to get more public support in Singapore and the Koreas, I believe I said. So let's start on that. I will try to sway the public. Reporting in. And we do have some places that need stabilization. Most of all, our largest country, India. We'll restore peace to this nation. Where to? And then one June here I'm going to send to investigate because I want to find out more about some of these unknown counselors wandering around. Eyes on target. Get more intelligence on other factions in. and be able to do more about what they're doing. This guy's going to do a public campaign in, I think, South Korea. Let me look. Yeah, I could use more support in South Korea. Making our case. And so that's how we're starting things off this uh, this mission cycle in July. Um, I will get back to you in October, unless something really dramatic happens before then. And so I'll see you in three months. So here's something the factions are smart enough to do if you arrest a counselor who they don't really care about. They just basically fire them immediately. And so that's what they did, is just dismiss their counselor, burn them from the organization, you know, classic Mission Impossible style, the secretary will disavow your actions. And so... Now we can't turn them, we can't get any more from them, apparently. Oh well. Ah, so here we've completed our storyline project, or one of them. It's given us a lot of control points here. We're actually back up to being able to control everything we have, pretty much. And it creates a new organization, which I'm going to look at here. And we have to show the aliens that we are worthy of their trust, somehow. Somehow.
So because of that, we have this new organization here, the Shield of the Devoted, which provides a lot of stat boosts. Yeah, let's see what happens if I give it to Yang Biao here. And that's up his administration so that he can actually fully control all this orgs. Also, we have a few, a few other organizations here I'm going to add to my to my counselors. So here we are in October. Not too much has changed since the last uh, update I gave you with our advances towards our mission, getting those new orgs. We did detain a resistance counselor, but they immediately got burned by their organization also. We can now unify the Koreas, and I am going to do that. Your orders. So what I have to do is take my counselor, one of my counselors, and tell them to set national policy in either of the Koreas. I think I want them unified under South Korea because it's, you know, a democracy and gives me better research that way. On my way to the capital. So Where that will allow me? us to unify them now that they've been in Federation together long enough. I have been doing some trolling by trying to increase popular opinion of the servants in the U.S. because I can see the resistance is trying to take over the U.S. and I want to make their life more difficult. Um, other than that, I mean, I've gotten enough control points now that I can kind of lock down the Gulf states, as well as the sort of India's neighborhood minus Pakistan and Singapore and the Koreas, but not enough to really expand outside of that yet. Um, so that's kind of what I'm waiting for before I do any sort of leap outwards. Um, I have gotten a little more intelligence on the other factions. Not too much useful yet because I haven't been able to turn a counselor. We're going to keep trying to do that and uh, also start trying to up our boost income from different places. And I'll report back to you in January of 2025. We are two years on. We have a foothold on Earth. Not really much in space yet, but the game is just beginning. It's a long game. So oh, it's January of 25, a new year. We had an opportunity where the defend interests on Project Exodus expired, but we didn't have enough influence to burn to take those points, unfortunately. We did get a couple of th three influence points, one in Uzbekistan, which I abandoned, and one in Chile, which I've kept and am running a moderate level of spoils to make money off the country. Oh, apparently I still have Guiana. Kind of forgotten about that. Guiana's doing okay. I'm not really exploiting them, but they're going to need some real work from us if I want them to really grow. So, we've been slowly making progress towards building the space economy. We've got a little bit more boost. We're researching the outpost mining complex so that we can actually start mining minerals up there. I don't think I've heard back from any of our probe missions yet. That should hopefully be soon. And uh, we've continued to augment our counselors, which ups our overall stats, our research, and also makes them better at what they're doing. And we've tried some more times to interrogate members of other factions, but they keep just getting burned by their faction when we try it. Um, we might just try and have working espionage on them so that we can have a little bit of an insight into what their faction is doing. Like, see, for example, here, 
because I know about one of their counselors, well, I can find out a little bit about him. But more importantly, I can find out what Resistance is researching right now. You can see they're mostly working on Alien Origin. Whereas Humanity First... Oh, I think because I had a counselor, I can see their tech. Because the initiative, I definitely have another counselor who I can see here. So, anyway, trying to get more cross-factional intelligence. Um, slowly building up boost. And I'll report back in March. Ready to go. Excuse me, I'll report back in April. All right, here we've reached our probe to Mars, and we can find out what's there, and there's a lot of good sites on Mars. First step, though, is going to be our moon base. Then we'll go to Mars. Or maybe to a near-Earth asteroid if it looks better. So it is April, time for another update. I've been trying to talk, take over Malaysia, but with limited success. But I am getting a little bit of their boost now, which is helpful. Um, other than that, we just have basically the same regions as before. Um, we do have a solar array built on the moon, I believe. Let me double check. Yeah, we have the outpost core, we have the solar collector. The next thing we need is the mining complex. The problem is it requires a lot of boost. Uh, 56. Now, once we get these nuclear freighters here, it should require considerably less boost to get things up to the moon and Mars. And so that's our next kind of big, big ticket tech item. Should be arriving in about eight months or so. And let's see, right now I make 18 boost a year, though that's of course going up all the time. So hopefully within a year or so, a year, year and a half, I can actually have a moon mine operating. I'm not sure if any of the other places have any moon mines operating yet. I'm just looking here. Let's see, here's the protectorate. Yeah, no, everybody just has their claims on the moon, it looks like. Nobody has any actual mining sites up and running. So we're not falling behind yet. That's that's good. Not even Project Exodus. Now, the aliens have been spreading out a bit in the outer system. Like, I think they have a base on Titan. Let me double check. Yes, there is an alien base... Orbiting Titan. Graceful Demon Station. Currently being assembled here. So that they can actually build ships here instead of having to build them way out in the outer system. And that's what I assume they're doing at least. They've got Uranus. They've got plenty of things in the outer Kuiper Belt objects. And here's an interesting one. What's this? 60558 Echeklus. What are you? Uh, this is a Centaur. It's an asteroid that goes from the belt out to the outer system and back. So it's kind of on a long arcing orbit. Uh, nice for the aliens. Unfortunately, by the time it gets back to... Um, gets back to Earth orbit or near Earth, I think it'll be pretty late in the game. But these eccentric orbits do provide some interesting opportunities for sending things out or in without having to fly all the way out there yourself. You can kind of ride along with it, although you need the Delta V to catch up to it, so it's not 100% of savings. Anyway, um, we will continue with operations here on Earth, and I have tried to... Um, arrest some other counselors. They basically get burned by their organization right away, but I figure that's got to be slowing down their organization. Even though our counselors aren't super elite yet, they've still had some XP spent on them that I'm making them waste. 
So that's got to be helpful for my cause. Of course, I'm focusing on my main enemy of the resistance and humanity and humanity first. Um, the academy is a lesser enemy. Um, the protectorate is sort of a untrustworthy ally. The initiative and Project Exodus are essentially competitors. I, I want to take stuff from them possibly, but I don't see them their goals as inherently a threat to my goals at present. So given all that, I will report back in July. Ready for my mission. Alright, we just got our probe to that near-Earth asteroid. That might be our first base beyond the moon, because it's got everything except fissiles. And so, let me see what it would cost to set up a base out here. Yeah, right now it requires a huge amount of boost, but that's because I don't have those nuclear freighters researched in part. So that'll help. And then once I'm able to build a lot of the resources for it in space, that'll also help. So, hopefully, we'll be able to get out there before too long. I think this would be a good operating base for us for an early mining site beyond the Earth-Luna system. So, it is July, and it's an important point here because we have a shot to take one or two of these points away from Project Exodus uh, that they've been hanging on to in India so tenaciously. Uh, we have a bit of influence to spend, and so we can see what we can do Your to orders. crack down on these points Your orders. and see if Ready we can take orders. them away. So I'm going to give one June here another point of investigation. And I'm just looking at some of these here. Ah, yeah, this org. Well, it would cost me 70 influence, though, so I can't afford that right now. But maybe I can give her an org from someone else that increases her investigation. Yeah, like this one here. So that will help with the crackdown phase, which is step one here. And you can see even without spending anything, I'm getting a 25% chance to do a crackdown on them. If I spend a lot, I can get that up to like 80. Targeting their key people. Now at unfortunately, Yang Bia here is not so good at the purge phase, but we're going to give it a shot. And hopefully we can do sort of a crackdown purge in quick succession and knock them out Targeting of one of those opposition. points. Your orders? Meanwhile, we've been continuing with investigating other counselors and seeing what we can do there. We did make a non-aggression pact with the Protectorate. We'll see what we can find. What's the up? 
and I will get back to you in October and let you know how our situation has changed since then. Or since now. We now have a spy in the ranks. All right, so we have now successfully turned one of the Academy's counselors. So we have essentially a double agent. And so if I go to my list of counselors here, I have Emmanuel Wenzel here. And I could set him to start failing missions all the time. I'm not going to have him do that because I think that then the AI will realize that he's been turned and fire him. So I'm just going to have him not fail missions right now. I can turn that up if I need to in the future. And the other advantage of having him turned, well, number one, I can know everything about him and his organizations. I can look and see if there's any useful orgs I should take from him. And also, I now have a lot more intelligence on the Academy's operations than I did before. So here's another Academy member here. Uh, it's trying to stabilize Italy. Another one here trying to do, it looks like a purge on probably an initiative or some point in, in Romania. And I think there's a couple more around the world. I just need to go to my Intel page and I can see them. So yeah, now because I have a mole in their ranks, I can see where all of their people are and who they are in a way that normally I can't do. And so that's why you want a mole in their ranks. Now I can go after their other counselors, I can sabotage projects, I can do all sorts of useful things. Alright, so here I've been able to steal an engineering project from the Academy. And I'm going to take this Nerva drive so I have a nuclear rocket engine in the future. So unfortunately we just had a random event blow up our solar collector on our moon base. Wasn't really doing anything yet, so I'm going to hold off on rebuilding it for now. Offering support. But that's life in space, especially when you don't have weapons to shoot down incoming asteroids or anything. So here it's October. I've got that turned counselor from the academy. Singapore is doing a crash program to build a space program because it's very equatorial and that will help me build more boost, which is slowly building up to the level where I can actually start a space economy. I know I keep saying that, and I probably didn't pick the fastest strategy to get into space with Korea and India as my main countries and not even full control over India because of how tenacious Project Exodus is. But... Bit by bit, we're growing more powerful. So are the other factions, of course. And we're kind of in a little bit of a holding period here. I want to do some more intelligence, investigate some of the Humanity First or Resistance counselors, hopefully even turn one of them. Um, waiting on some research to finish, both collective and individual. And that's where I'm going to call it for now. We've played for a year and a quarter since last time. Um, no super huge events have really happened yet. The No world wars, no nuclear strikes, no alien invasions. It's all just still kind of the early game. And, I mean, the aliens are building out there. Our, our saviors from the stars, they will come. You can see their fleets there in the outer system. And a few in the inner system. This one coming, going home, it looks like. It was out. It was in the inner system with us, and now it's going back home to its base. Way out there on a moon of, a moon of Uranus, in this case. I 
think their home base, their sort of home headquarters in the system is Quawar here. Which they have a couple of major sites on, it looks like. And a major base in orbit, Alien Station Able here. You can see this is a real, real headquarters of the aliens out here in deep space. So things are going to get more interesting gradually. Um, once I get those nuclear freighters, get my boost up a little bit, I should be able to build a moon mining station without too much trouble. And that will really start us taking off a little bit because, let's see. So my mining complex, it would produce 1.4 volatiles, it would produce 18.4 uh, metals each month, and 0.45 fissiles. So I basically have everything but water being produced in space. So I just have to send the water up from Earth. And that will reduce boost costs dramatically. However, it still costs 56.9 boost, boost. Even with the nuclear freighters reducing that cost, I'm guessing it'll be something like 45 boost. So we're still about a year away from having sufficient boost to do it. So that'll be next episode. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.